What we're going to do today is we're going to figure out how to make one of these wine bottle bell wind chimes. It's just a, these are blue glass wine bottles. Of course you can use any color. I like the blue a lot but they're hard to find. I have to drink a lot of wine to get that many bottles so I have my friends collect them for me. It's got a wooden ball for a clapper and a copper star for a flag. You can see that the different size bottles make different sounds. I do think that the bigger the bottle, the better the bell effect. We'll talk more about that later. Well, hello. Welcome to my workshop, cluttered as it is. I'm kind of a pack rat. I don't throw away anything, but we're going to we're going to learn how to cut the bottom off a wine bottle, a simple way, I think, and make the wine bottle bell wind chimes that we were sh shown earlier. You can use different kinds of wine bottles. As I said earlier, I like the biggest, the biggest ones you can find. The bigger, the better. This is a standard, what I call a standard wine bottle, 750 milliliters. I've already got the bottom cut out of this one. It makes an okay sound. Here's a, a wooden ball that we would use for a clapper. It makes an okay sound. You can even cut the bottom out of a beer bottle. Isn't that funny? A smaller bottle like that makes a, a lower note than a bigger bottle. But that's not always the case. Sometimes the biggest bottles will actually have a lower note. Today we're going to try and cut the bottom out of, out of this wine bottle. And this is a big one. I think this is a liter and a half. We're going to cut the bottom out of it, turn it into a, a wind chime. We don't need a lot of tools to do this. Piece of wood, this is a, just a piece of what uh, would be known as one by, it's three quarters of an inch thick, just a piece of scrap wood. Your basic C clamp, four, six inch. Most home workshops, garages are going to have a C-clamp. This is the one thing that you may not have. It's a glass cutter. You can pick these up at well-stocked hardware stores, home centers. I think I bought this one at a garage sale. They're kind of old-fashioned, but they're still out there and you can still get them. They're less than 10 bucks. I do recommend either Kevlar gloves, which I'm going to wear because they're thin and have good fingertip feel even though they're cut proof. Otherwise I recommend just the old-fashioned garden variety leather gloves. You might break the bottle even if you get the bottom cut off successfully it's going to have sharp edges until you get around to sanding, sanding it. So always wear hand protection and I recommend eye protection. In my case I have to wear glasses or I can't see what I'm doing but I, I would recommend some type of eye protection whenever you're trying to cut glass. Okay, I'm just simply going to take this scrap of wood and I'm going to put it right on the edge of the workbench. And the workbench has an overlap edge. And I'm going to take this glass cutter and place it on the scrap wood and tie the whole thing down with a C-clamp. You can see from this close-up that I've simply taken the C-clamp, stuck the glass cutter over the edge of the scrap wood and taken the C-clamp and squeezed it all down together. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to take the glass bottle, I'm going to slide it over against the block of wood and pull it back against the glass cutter wheel. See how it contacts the glass cutter wheel? I'm just kind of cradling it at two points contact there, the glass cutter and the wood block, and the bottom on the workbench. And I'm holding down the neck while I spin the bottle. Okay, I wasn't real successful on the first attempt. I'm kind of out of practice. I haven't done this for a while. I want to show you what can go wrong. It doesn't necessarily turn into a fatal error, but if you see right there, you see the line has a has a, a divot in it right there, and also 
right here. That's because I let the bottle tip and I didn't hold it flat on the workbench. Now that may come off of there, the bottom may come off of this and make a, make a fine bell, or it may just ruin the whole project. So we're going to cut one more while we're at it. This one's a little harder to see, it's dark green. Again, it takes a little coordination because I'm holding down on the neck of the bottle, pressing it down against the surface of the workbench, and at the same time I'm pressing it against the glass cutter and giving it one full turn. Remember to keep pressing down while you push against the glass cutter. You should be able to hear a, a, a scratchy sound as the glass cutter runs the line around the bottom of the bottle. It's not quite fingernails on the chalkboard, but it's a, it does make an eerie sound. We're almost there. Keep pressing down. Here comes my line. Okay, we did a lot better on this second bottle. I remembered to hold it flat against the workbench. And as you can see, I've got a, re a really straight line all the way around the bottle. No zigzags, no gaps, and really no overlaps. You don't want to cut this twice. You start, go around the bottle, when your line's running together, stop. If It actually makes it worse if you, if you run the glass cutter over the same line a second time. It actually makes it harder to get the glass to break on the line. Next step, up to the kitchen sink. We'll finish this. Hello again. We're up in the kitchen now because we need a sink. And I don't have a wash sink or a laundry sink down in my shop, so we're, we're up in Mom's kitchen. We're going to thermally shock the bottle and see if we can get the bottom to pop off. Now there's a guy on the internet that shows how to cut the top off of wine bottles. And there's all different kinds. If you look for cutting a wine bottle or cutting, cutting, recycling a wine bottle on, on the internet, you'll find all different kinds. And some of them involve putting a string around the bottle. The string has been soaked in some flammable liquid and then they light the string and that heats the bottle. Then they pour ice water on it and it breaks. But I've, I'm here to tell you that a lot of times the bottle breaks rather than just cutting, cutting the glass and you wind up with a ruined bottle of fractured edge. This line from the glass cutter creates a stress, stress line around the bottle and we're going to use that to our, to our favor to get the bottle, hopefully to get the bottom to come right off the bottle. Now, there's another guy on the internet that shows how to cut the tops off of wine and beer bottles and he does that so that he can make glasses. And he uses a similar method to what I'm using, although he, he didn't say use ice water. He just cut his line with a glass cutter with a bought wine bottle cutter. He, he makes the line and then he pours hot water on it and it causes it to fracture and pop right off for him and his videos. But I tried that and I didn't have much luck. So what I've been forced to do is I put mine in ice water. Give it a nice ice water bath. Get it nice and, nice and chilled. Then we're going to pour some hot water on it and see if we can get the bottom to pop off. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. I've got a teapot full of water that it's, that's at a rolling boil. I've got my wine bottle with the cut line that's in ice water. We're going to drizzle this boiling hot water right along that line. See if we can get it to pop. See the first go round, I'm not getting anything. But don't don't give up. We'll put the pot back on the stove, shove the bottle back into the ice. We're gonna we're gonna chill it again. We're gonna try this one more time. Alright, let's try it again. And look at that. The bottom fell off in the ice bucket. How cool is that? And here it is. I never even heard it crack when I poured the hot water on, but obviously it did. It's a nice straight cut line. 
Now I'm going to tell you that the edges are a bit sharp, but there's no jagged edges. It's nice and smooth and straight all the way around. Just what we wanted. We'll sand the edges down in the shop and finish this project in just a bit. Now just for fun, let's see if we can have any luck with this one. It's got the bad line. It's got the offset here and here. So we're going to try and see if we can overcome that, and I, I don't know if it's going to work or not. Many times when I do this, the bottom just falls off right in the sink. When I pour the hot water over it, the bottom falls off and lands in the sink. Here's another wine bottle project. Take a wine bottle, drill a little hole in the back, fill it up with Christmas lights and clear glass marbles. It makes a neat lighted kitchen decoration. Okay, let's see if we can get the bottom off of this bottle. Here we go. Alright, let's plunge it back into the ice water and see what happens. Sometimes you can actually hear the glass breaking. I don't know if I did or not. I might have heard a sound. Might have imagined it. And there we go. Just like that. And you see, here's what can happen. I got a nice straight edge, but I've also got a fracture line right here that runs from the edge up like that. So this one's no good. This one goes in the trash. And that's my fault. The fracture line starts at the crooked cut. You have to have a straight line cut and a little bit of luck. But I'm here to say I have about a 75% success rate. So that's not too bad. If we, if we try and cut four and we get three of them to turn out, I think that's been a successful day. Okay, back down to the workshop. In case you didn't get a look, a good look earlier, I just want to show you a little detail of the simple, the simple setup to get that straight line around the bottom of your bottle because that straight line is critical. Without a straight line, it's not, the bottle's not going to come off clean and you're going to be disappointed in the results. This is just so easy with this setup. In order to uh, finish our wine bottle bell, we need the workings, the part that goes inside. And that's just some string with something that's slightly bigger than the neck of the bottle, a wooden ball for a clapper, and some hangy thing here on the end. This is a copper star that I've cut out to, for the wind to catch and to ring your bell. The whole thing varies in length. This one is about 30 inches long, but you can adjust the length to suit your needs and the size of your bottle. The string I'm using is 8 inch braided nylon line. You can get this at Home Depot, Lowe's, your favorite hardware store. This is 8 inch. You can use whatever side works for you. I've even been known to use salvage the string out of a Venetian blind. If you're changing the blinds in your house one day, don't throw that stuff away. You know you can use the blind slats to make garden stakes to label your vegetables and flowers and you can save the string to make your bottle bells out of. You may wonder about the wooden ball. These are actually rough doll's heads. Got at a craft store. A doll's head has a flat bottom right here. You can see and it has a hole partially drilled through it, which really helps us a lot. This helps us to get it done right. This hole, the hole doesn't go all the way through, and we're going to fix that. Doll's heads are a little bit cheaper than round wooden balls. You can get balls that are round all the way around, but I, I don't think they have a hole. And they're a little harder to manufacture, so they cost more money. Yeah, I take that back. This is a two or two and a half inch ball, and it's about 250 for one. Here's a bag of seven inch and a half wooden doll's head balls, wooden balls. They cost me about two bucks and a half. So this is a bargain, this is the way to go. These are inch and a half and they'll be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and drill this one. I've picked a drill out that's exactly the same size as the existing hole in the ball. We can see from the way that the drill bit goes in, it's almost through. So we're gonna go ahead and run it out the backside. Get the chips out of there, get a nice clean hole. Okay. We need the upper piece of our string. 
We need something that won't fit through the neck of the bottle. In this case, I've just used a piece of copper wire. This is number 12 copper wire. I took a pair of pliers and bent a nice oval shape in it that's just slightly larger than the inside neck of the bottle. You can also use a wooden bead. You can buy these at your local craft store. Get one with a hole that your string will just fit through. This one's a little big. If you get one with a hole too big, you'll have to run the string through the bead at this point and then tie a, tie a knot around the bead to keep it in place. You got your wooden doll's head ball with a knot in the string to keep the ball from sliding down any further. And the bottom end, I'm using a brass swivel, fishing swivel. But you can also just take and make another wire ring out of house wire. This is number 12 again. Drill a hole in your copper flag, run your ring through it, and tie the string. You don't want to just drill a hole through your copper flag or your cop whatever you're using and put the string straight through because the, the copper is thin and, and sharp and it would cut the string pretty quickly out in the wind. By having a ring there or a fishing swivel, get these at Walmart or your local sporting goods store, wherever. That takes makes it nice and pretty, put, it's easy to attach, and it won't let the copper cut through your string. Okay, one last step before we turn this into a real bell, ready to hang. We need to work on this edge. I did get a nice clean cut. It's a nice square corners. It's flat. There really aren't any burrs sticking up. Terribly sharp edges, but it is freshly cut glass. And freshly cut glass almost always has a fairly sharp edge. You can use a piece of aluminum oxide cloth, or you can use sandpaper. Be sure to put on your gloves. This is, this is one of the best plot times to get cut, and you don't want to get cut. And you can just sand. It doesn't take much. Just a couple of minutes. Go around the inside. Go all the way around. Get it all the way because you don't want... If this ever contacts your string, you don't want it to fray your string. Assembly tip. It's best if you... If you locate the knot on your string so that the ball is close to the bottom. That way the wooden ball contacts the bell part of the bottle and the string does not. That will give you a long life on your string. Okay, once you've sanded all the way around the inside, move to the outside. The outside's easier. It doesn't take a lot of elbow grease. Just a few seconds to knock that razor sharp edge off of there and dull it just enough to make it safe. Okay, there we go. I'll take off the glove and give it the finger test. Alright, you can tell by feeling there's nothing catching there. It's not trying to cut me. It was just that quick with a little sandpaper. Don't leave out the sandpaper step. Now you're ready to assemble your bell. Slip the whole contraption inside the neck of your bottle, and there you go. You can soak the labels up, soak the bottle in water for 24, 48 hours in a bucket of water, and the labels should come right off, or you can leave them on, whatever works for you. If you've got a little breeze, it can be quite noisy. We love it. Okay. Here's the finished product, ready to hang and enjoy, or give to your friends. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Try it for yourself, it's not as hard as it looks, I promise you. You could probably do one faster than it took me to make this video. Usually about 10-15 minutes you can have one ready to go. Enjoy the day, and thanks for visiting Kentucky Dan's Garden and Workshop.